welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a review on my sewing machine. Someone asked me to do a review on the sewing machine. Now this machine is fairly new to me and don't worry if you don't see me. It's not about me today. It's about the sewing machine. So I'm just going to kind of be in the background <laughs> of the sewing machine. But I want to put this a little bit closer so you guys can see. Now a lot of these stitches and everything that you see here uh, yeah here I haven't used um, previously when I started the YouTube channel I was using the brother uh, project runway sewing machine which worked great I got it before autumn was born so I would say it was about a little over six years old well, she's seven now so I'd say six and a half years old almost seven so um, it started dying on me after I did my niece's prom dress it just kind of completely shut down on me it was it started getting really tight I took the entire thing apart to figure out what was wrong with it I couldn't so I got a new machine um and this is the Janome new home I'm hoping I'm saying that right this model is the HD 3000 and I actually got it off of QVC I did the payments for this um so let's just go over what all these stitches and things are now oops, turning it around first what you have here is the sewing guide for your different stitches and things that you are going to use it has a guide here of what your um, tension should be and your length and your width which is right here um, it tells you for the different feet and kind of the stitches that you're using, what the suggested um, width and length is, and your tension and everything like that. So I'm just going to flip this a little bit so you can see on the inside here. This little wheel here is how, what your tension, uh, this is the tension wheel here, this little black thing here. And then you have your spaces here for your feet, and of course your thread right here you have a upper and then you have the lower and this over here is for uh, threading your bobbin so if there's anything that I haven't pointed out that you want me to talk about let me know oh I'm sorry this is I don't know what this black wheel is I'll have to look that up I'm sorry this here is your tension wheel this one here and I'll look in the, the book to tell you what this is, but I've never changed it, so I really don't know what that is. And this is something new that I didn't even realize with my sewing machine. I kind of figured this out by mistake. Uh, that opens so you can change your light bulb. You can kind of see if your thread gets caught. You can see a little bit better. Um, unlike my other sewing machine, I had to take this area Actually, I had to take the whole back area apart to see inside here, and this is actually wonderful. So, let's kind of go over a few things. This is your back stitch. On my other sewing machine, I had a manual, I mean, an automatic back stitch. I would just press the button and it would back stitch for me. This I have to push down. If you guys see me a lot, you see me pushing something down to back stitch. This is what I'm doing. Um, then you have your wheel here, and this is for changing your stitches. If you can see the little red indicator moving, that's what that's for. You have your on and your off switch here on the side along with um, your plug for your um, foot. So here are the different, um, let's take this one off so you can see this too. These are the different feet and we're going to go over these feet really quickly. I'm using the book guys because like I said I have not used all of these feet just yet so I'm just gonna go over this with you and I did get a lot more stuff with the sewing machine that's in here these are always extra needles that I buy that didn't come with the machine I just buy like universal needles and stuff like that so all of this stuff okay let's see some of the stuff I had previously with my other sewing machine So I just want to show you the stuff that came with this particular machine. That's 
Okay. So the first thing we have here is the needle case. As you all know, all the needles that you would need for your sewing machine. That's what this is. Two is this little thing. It's a quilter and it has a spot up here where I just showed you where all the feet go on the sewing machine. That It's a spot up there for that. So that's what that is. Then you have three, which is the blind stitch foot. And that's G. If I could find G. Don't have my glasses on you guys, so bear with me here. And that is the blind stitch hem foot. And this also has a place. Um, and this is L for the quilter. Um, just in case you guys choose to buy this machine. Um, like I said, I got mine from QVC. I'm pretty sure you can buy yours anywhere. D is the hammer foot, which is great. And I keep forgetting that I have this thing. And um, this works really well if you want to do um, finish your edges. This is another way to finish your hem on your um, items that you make. And then we have E, which is our zipper foot. And I should have known that right off the bat. And it looks like this. It's a, like a left and a right side for you to use when you're doing your zippers. And if you would like to see me make anything using these different feet, just go ahead and ask me and we can I can add that to the list of requests that I have. This, this is actually a request as well. Then we have B. This is the transparent buttonhole foot. A is our zigzag foot which I never use ironically when I'm zigzagging I just use the regular foot that's there but that's what A is a zigzag foot and then we have C which are, is our overage foot and this is great also as a finishing foot to use when you're trying to finish off um, your items. Uh, this is our what is this? What number is this? This is our, so this is our automatic buttonhole foot. That's what that is. Then you have, um, of course this came with four extra bobbins, which already have thread on them, as well as your little screwdrivers, just in case you need to open this up for any reason. You have this bigger one here that normally, that works here when you have to take the whole casing off to replace a certain foot for this. You will use that. The only time I've taken this off is when I use my ruffler foot and that's when I have to take this whole thing off. But other than that, these feet I don't have to do that for. And this one is just an extra screwdriver for these little screws and things there. And you also have your um, spool holder. You have two. My other one is here. It's a smaller one. So you have two different sizes for your button covers. I mean your spool covers as well you have this thing which is your extra spool pin which goes in here that's what this black thing is for guys <laughs> it goes right in there so that's that sort and then you have this little felt thing right here as well as your i have this <laughs> which is your seam ripper and i have a little duster to clean out on the inside I just don't know where it is right now um, but yeah that's pretty much everything that came with this sewing machine where is my duster I must have misplaced it because it's not here but as you guys may have seen or may not have seen when I'm done sewing I use this to clean out my uh, dust and everything like that it's just just makes it easier to get more dust and let in bread and things like that out so I'm gonna put these things back and I'm not using right now and I will put my feet back later okay so what do I think about this one machine I love it um what I've learned with sewing I actually need to purchase a um industrial sewing machine but this works a lot better than my um, project runway one did I think that one was more so for just 
you know small sewing projects and things like that but because I make tutus and sell them and then you know I've been commissioned for prom dresses and things like that um, I need a more powerful sewing machine and I do have I'm sorry guys one more thing here I told you my sewing room is in shambles right now but I do have my arm here this, this little piece that goes here I have it I just don't know where it is but um, this is what it looks like if you can see in the book or maybe that's what it looks like it goes here I don't have it right now because when I sew I normally sew with this off it just makes it easier especially if I'm using like elastic or something like that you can just put that around here or when you're sewing um, sleeves it makes it a lot easier to do that there but like I showed you here and we will go over the stitches so let's do that okay so just in case you're one of those book readers um, or you're new to sewing it goes over everything that you need to go through like winding the bobbin and things like that in this book as well as you know some other fun things that you need to know how to remove the bobbin you would just this little black thing here you push it to the side and then this comes up that comes out your bobbin goes in there if you don't know how to put your bobbin in it tells you in the book but I will just show you really quickly turning this this way so you can see what I'm doing so this goes in here like that and then you have to like wrap it around the back here and then do like that and then this top goes back on simple easy it's not complicated it's complicated doing it from this way but <laughs> Okay, I'm putting it in the wrong way. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Anyway, guys. There we go. That's how we do that. So, again, let's get to the stitches. Okay, so I may have to come around with the stitches to kind of show you what these stitches are. Okay, so they don't really go from number one on. So, I'm just going to do it as they show it in the book. And as we all know, number 12 here is our normal zigzag stitch. We have 12, which can also be an overcast stitch. But then it shows you here what you um, could set that to, to be what you need it to be. And then we have our overage stitch, which is 18. And that will work with that overage foot that I showed you. And then 11 here is our tricot stitch. Then we have our triple stitch triple stretch stitch which can be used on spandex or like when we're working with stretchy fabrics I don't use it I haven't used it yet zigzag stitch normally works for me so that's what I use but this triple stretch stitch can work for that it says this strong durable stitch is recommended where both elasticity and strength are needed to ensure comfort and durability so yeah you can use that stitch for that and then 14 here is our outline stretch stitch. And I'm sorry guys, my hair is in the way. Then we have, let's see, our sewing buttonholes. Should we use 12? Again, they recommend for that. Um, you know, you, it shows you how to use the, for the buttonholes and things.